Bounty of Blood is the third major piece of DLC release for Borderlands 3, where you, the acclaimed Vault Hunter, land on a heavily Western-themed planet and must take on the bounty and kill the leader of the Devil Riders gang, who quite literally ride around on devils, which is this new raptor-type enemy that all the gang members are riding on. Don't mind my devil. He won't bite. Unless I tell him to. Easy, Toge. Easy. They don't mean us no harm. So, you must be the one who just crashed in a heap of dust and doom. You here for the Sheriff's Bounty, or do you have other business on Gehenna? The story in this DLC felt much smaller in scale than the previous two DLCs, which is a shame because aesthetically this is actually my favorite. The architecture, colors, and character designs are all very appealing. Now, no returning characters make an appearance for the first time, making this a wholly fresh experience. And the in-your-face constant humor is deliberately replaced with much more subtle jokes, or at least subtle compared to normal Borderlands humor. The story is narrated by a deep voice character called The Liar, who only feels fully realized in combat situations where he recounts the events of the story you're living in and gives you hints as to where you should be going or how to destroy one of the bosses. The wind on Gehenna was hot as spent powder. It smelled like it too. As soon as the Vault Hunter's boots tasted dirt, he was off to town to see a sheriff about a bounty. <laughs> None of the new characters in this DLC stand out apart from maybe Rose, but even she isn't given enough screen time to really develop. Mostly because Bounty of Blood features the fewest cinematics and is the shortest of the three DLCs, clocking in at less than three hours to complete the main quest line. That's not to say that it's bad by any means. Actually, where it lacks on the story department, it makes up for in the gameplay and loot drops. And multiple environment interactables have been added that add slightly more depth and much more movement to the otherwise typical firefights. These include exploding crystals, jump pads, teleport stations, and a plant that takes over enemies to temporarily become your ally. Now these interactions also create for at least one really clever boss fight. And when compared to the other expansions, I felt that both the amount and the power of the weapon drops were vastly more useful and the excessive reward at the end of the main quest line is definitely welcome. Post-DLC content features your underwhelming typical 11 side quests and collectibles which are there for those who enjoy 100%ing everything. I would imagine if you wanted to 100% everything in this DLC, it would take you somewhere between 6 to 8 hours. Alright, so the story and the scale of this DLC was a little bit underwhelming, but the gameplay mechanics, the art direction, and the loot drops definitely make up for it, which is why I would give Bounty of Blood a 7 out of 10. Nice to catch up, Sheriff.